For the very first time since 2010, I now have a brand new electronic drum set. Welcome to the F Note 5, which is a really good looking drum set. A lot of people seeing this for the first time have been pretty confused because aside from the somewhat obviously rubber cymbals, the drums themselves are real drum shells. So these are all actual wooden shells. This is actually a little miniature floor tom. It's not like the usual pads attached to a rack that most people are used to seeing when they think of electronic drums. I've been playing these drums for almost two months now. I got them in early February and it's now late March. So I thought it would be a good time to make a video about it and just give you some of my early impressions of this drum set. For full disclosure, this was a sponsored instrument, but I'm not being sponsored to make this video, so any opinions expressed are entirely my own. In terms of the sizes of this kit, the bass drum is a 16-inch kick, the snare and floor tom here are 12 inches, and this is a 10-inch rack tom. There's actually an expansion set, which I believe there is an 11-inch rack tom and probably a 13-inch floor tom, uh, but because my studio is pretty small, I just opted to have the standard four-piece set up. The hi-hats here are actually like normal standard 14-inch hats. This is a 16-inch crash and an 18-inch ride. I'm not sure if it's visible on the camera here, a little bit hidden, but there is a tiny little 8-inch splash here, which I kind of use as my secondary crash. Um, all of these elements are mounted on actual hardware, so this is a normal standard hi-hat stand, cymbal stand, the snare is on a proper snare basket, and I think that is a bit of an advantage uh, if you're a newer drummer and you can only get electronic drums because you stay in, a, in an apartment or something like that. It's a great thing to be able to get familiar with actual drum hardware. That is something that I feel like a lot of new drummers who only learn on electronic drums kind of miss out on because they don't get to play with all the gear and hardware that's involved in the setup of a whole acoustic drum set. So all of these have mesh heads, both top and bottom, except for the bass drum, which has a standard normal drum head on the front. I'll talk a bit more about that later. These are just standard drum lugs. You can tune them with a normal drum key to get the feel you want. And these rims are actually gray rubber, kind of a matte finish, and it almost looks metallic. So that sort of adds to the illusion that this is an actual acoustic drum set. I was pleasantly surprised that it could actually fit into my room because previously I was having a smaller kit with like miniature pads and um, no real hardware, it was just rack mounted. So let me just quickly measure this and give you guys an estimate of the size from hats to ride. That is about 140 cm, give or take which is 55 inches. And if I try and measure, let's see, from where the hi-hat pedals are to the back of the kit, it's roughly about 100 cm, which is like 40 inches or so. So it doesn't take up a lot of space, though I'm not counting the chair because you can shift the chair wherever you want. The first thing that I realized when I sat down to play this, which made it way more enjoyable than my previous drum set was the simple mechanical fact that the bass drum is not going to go anywhere because it is an actual kick drum. It's not just a small kick pad which tends to rock back and forth or slide around or just shift in weird ways. If you have played any other electronic drum set with a small kick pad, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is the most annoying thing especially if you're playing a song with a lot of bass drum work. So just that made me so much happier to play this drum set because the kick is just staying put. The next most important thing that I always look out for in electronic kits is the hi-hat. There is nothing that beats a real acoustic hi-hat. But that said, this one comes pretty close. So let me just play a little bit and I can show you what I mean. If I put my foot on the hi-hat pedal somewhat loosely, this is the sound I get, and if I step down harder after a while,
there's actually a difference in how closed your closed hi-hat is. So it's not just like an on and off closed hat trigger. In terms of using it for like keeping time with the left foot, it's actually quite light because the rubber pads themselves are reasonably thin. Not as thin as acoustic hi-hats, obviously, because there have to be sensors and electronic parts in them. But I've played other floating or moving hi-hats that are just very clunky and when you step on them, you get kind of overwhelmed by the sound of the two pieces of rubber just smacking against each other. And it makes left foot hi-hat work when you're trying to do foot tricks really unpleasant. So I found that these hats were not too clunky and also very sensitive. Definitely the best e-kit hi-hat I've played on so far. All the cymbals are pretty decent as far as electronic drum cymbals go. Both the Crash and Riot have three zones. So there is a bell trigger, there is a bow trigger, and an edge trigger. Let me show you how those sound. The triggers in these cymbals are also sensitive 360 degrees, which means you can hit them either in front or the side or all the way at the back and they will still respond the same way. And that's pretty huge because for a lot of electronic drum cymbals, the sensitive zone is only at one area on the cymbal, the part that's supposed to face you. And if the cymbal happens to rotate while you're playing or someone set it up who didn't know that there is a particular zone that needs to be facing the player, when it's struck, um, you might end up hitting the side instead and then the trigger will not respond correctly. So you might end up hitting way too hard only to get a fraction of the sound that you want out of the cymbal. So it is a pretty huge change to be able to play on cymbals that are sensitive all the way around and I can also choke them anywhere on the cymbal. So I could hit it, say here, mute it there, works perfectly well. The other cool thing about the cymbals is that because of the material as well as the color, I think, they actually don't show up with stick marks, very obviously. I've been teaching on these almost every day and practicing and playing for definitely well over a month now and I don't think you can really see any stick marks on any of the cymbals. Like if I squint really closely, I can see some small marks but they're not obvious at all. Whereas when I play on cymbals that have black rubber finishes, usually you get white stick marks on them. It's a small, subtle nuance, but it's fairly impressive. And it makes the whole aesthetic of this kit look very clean. Speaking of clean, another small side benefit is that because the cymbals are grey, if dust settles on them, it's not obvious. You can't really tell that there's dust, although actually now that I talk about it, I can see the dust, so hang on. Another cool feature of this kit is the dedicated cross stick trigger on the snare over here. One of the huge problems I had with my previous kit was the cross stick frankly sucked. You have to turn it on manually and sometimes it wouldn't trigger properly. This has its own little um, piece at the side here that triggers the cross stick. So there is no more hitting the, the snare and accidentally getting a cross stick sound or trying to go for a cross stick and getting a snare sound works perfectly well. Next up, let's talk a little bit about the module on this drum set. The drum module is a touchscreen, which is quite an upgrade over what I was previously used to with buttons and stuff, but it is a pressure sensitive touchscreen rather than a finger sensitive touchscreen. So it's not quite what you might be used to with a phone, but the good thing is you can actually use a drumstick to navigate the menus if you so desired. Most of the settings are fairly standard. So we have the kit edit where you can select instruments by hitting them and you can adjust the levels, tuning, muffling. Um, you can do some basic EQ functions, panning, how much ambience is on that particular instrument. And this is where you can actually set the type of ambience. Then you can also set the levels so the relative volumes of each component over here. And there are things like 
the metronome. So click setup is over here. You can set the speed. You can also press anywhere along this line to jump to a different speed. Set the subdivision. So for example, this would give me 117 BPM in 4-4 four, four in 8 notes, which sounds like this. And you can change the sound settings here. One thing I would like to see is a tap tempo. Unfortunately, we don't have that. Um, there's also this cool thing called a stroke scope, which lets you see your accuracy. If I play this, you can see where the snare line So this is a pretty cool way to be able to see how accurate your timing is. Another super useful feature I found was the Bluetooth setting. So if I turn on the Bluetooth here, it's going to connect to my phone straight away and I can actually play music on my phone through the module, which means it'll be mixed in with my drum sounds and that's a great way to be able to practice along to songs. While you're doing that, there's also this little phone holder thing right below. Hang on, let me try and show you. So this thing is where you can put your phone. This module is also capable of recording straight to the computer with only one cable, which is this one over here. It is the micro USB, if I'm not wrong. And this just connects to a port in the side is right here and then I can connect the other end of it to sorry wrong way and then I can connect the other end of it to my computer and I can actually output eight different channels um, you can set the settings for that under settings and audio pad so over here there is a list of kick snare toms hats crash and next to it there are these little lines that say one two three four five six seven eight those are just the channels so for example, here I have Tom 1 selected. If I scroll the dial, there's a little dot here moving that will basically select which channel that's going to get recorded to. So now I have that on channel 3. My kick is on 1, snare is on 2, Tom 3 is on channel 4. I don't have a Tom 2 or Tom 4. My two crashes, crash 1 is this main one, crash 3 is actually the little splash. Those are recording as stereo on channels 7 and 8, and hi-hats and right are channels 5 and 6. So when I plug this into the computer in a DAW, it's just going to split all of those tracks into individually recorded elements. That is super convenient in case you want to adjust the level of something, like maybe the kick wasn't as loud as you want it to be in the actual mix, or you just want to boost some frequencies in the snare, reduce the toms, anything like that, you can have total control over your mix once you record individual tracks. Whereas if you just um, record everything as one single audio file, then you're a little bit limited in how you can modify that if you want to, to mix it. You can actually record MIDI at the same time while you record the audio from these eight different channels that you can output from this kit. But for me, I usually use electronic drums for like super rough recordings. So it's just nice to have that little bit of control um, to be able to tweak certain levels or EQ something without having to go into full on MIDI replacement. As you can tell from just looking at this drum set, it's clearly made to emulate acoustic drums. So the sounds that you get in the module are also 100% acoustic. If you're used to having like 808 type sounds or just really weird and somewhat eclectic samples in your kit, you're not going to find any of that there. There's no like extra percussion effects. There's no anything. There's just standard acoustic drum samples. For this particular model, there are 14 snare samples and around seven different types of toms. So for example, um, there's like 30-ish tom samples, but that's because each type of kit has two to four different samples. For example, um, this is currently set to the Yamaha Beach 12-inch, but there's also Yamaha Beach 10-inch and 13 and 14 and 16. So those are the five 
possible samples I could put here for a Yamaha Beach kit. For the bass drum, I can't remember. Bass drum, we have 10 samples. Not too bad, but for the hi-hats and ride cymbal, there's a lot less. For the hats, there are only four different hi-hat samples. And for the ride cymbal, we have five, which is not a lot. So when I first saw this, I was honestly a little bit disappointed because I am used to having dozens of samples to scroll through and that I would be able to select any instrument for any trigger. But here, we can only select hi-hat sounds on the hats. We can only select snare sounds on the snare. But when I thought about it, it kind of made sense because when it comes to my acoustic kit, I honestly only use like two pairs of hats. I interchange maybe two or three snare drums. I never change my toms, obviously. Um, embarrassingly, I only own one ride cymbal. I should probably get more someday, but I just really love this ride cymbal. In that context, it makes sense to not have too many options. And to be fair, after I messed around with this kit for the first few days, I've just pretty much stuck to the one setting that I liked and not really changed anything. So in that sense, I don't think I'm missing out on a lot. For this video, I'm not going to play through every single sound that is available in this kit because that would take way too long. There are 17 preset drum sets here with different combinations of cymbals and drums at different tunings with different ambient settings. Um, and they all sound pretty good out of the box. So I'm just going to give you a demo of a few of them and let you hear how it sounds. There were also a couple of you who asked how the kit would sound um, or how quiet the drums were, how it would sound without the audio. So let me just include a small segment here where I will have the drums with the audio as you would hear in your earphones and the drums just from the mic I'm using to pick up my voice here. I thought I would also include a little segment in this video talking about some tweaks I made to the drums to get them working according to what I like. And the first major adjustment I made when setting this up was actually where I installed the drum module. In the manual, it's recommended to put this module here under the hi-hat, 
but I instead attached it to my symbol stand over here. And this works especially if you only have one rack tom. If you had two and you put one tom here, that's going to take up this space. But with one tom here and with double pedals, I had a huge gaping hole over here. So I figured that I would just put the module over here instead. And this is just more in my eye line when I'm practicing. I don't really want to have to look down over here. On the flip side, the little phone holder is a little bit out of the way because it's a little near to the snare, but it still works. I can still put my phone there if I so desired. The first thing I tried out that gave me a little bit of problems day one setting up this kit was getting the cross stick trigger to work because I tried this out beforehand in the shop on the demo unit and it worked perfectly well. The rim trigger was a little higher than the snare rim so it would provide the correct rim click sound. But when I got it out of the box, it seemed like this piece was not high enough and my stick was hitting the rim so I was getting this kind of a sound instead and I couldn't figure how to raise this up. If that is a problem you're having, the solution is pretty simple. You just need to tighten all the lugs, um, especially the two where the rim trigger piece are, but I just tightened everything. So this, I would say, is a little bit of a limitation because if you like that kind of loose head and gushy feel to your snare, you can't do that with this if you want your cross stick trigger to work correctly. You can program it to have a loose snare sound, but your head itself is going to be pretty tight because it needs to be tight enough for this cross stick piece to be raised up and trigger correctly. Speaking of this, another small limitation I realized um, is that the rim and the snare cannot trigger simultaneously. To be fair, there are not many times you would want to do something like that, but if you were doing timekeeping on the rim and trying to play the snare, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, small limitation, not a huge deal breaker because most of the time you would not want your snare to trigger when you're hitting the rim and vice versa. Another tweak I had to make to the snare to get this to work how I want it was to adjust the sensitivity of the rim to get my rim shots to not trigger too much. So under menu and trigger settings, the snare is set to three zones. So there's the head, and which is zone A, the rim is zone B, and cross stick is zone C. So I just reduce the sensitivity to the rim trigger, which is the B zone by eight, and it works pretty fine. Um, if I had the sensitivity at what it was out of the box, which is zero, I just feel like I'm hearing a bit too much rim and not enough of the head. So this just worked better for me. Another tweak that I had to make to get this kit to sound more like what I wanted was to muffle the front bass drum head. So I actually just dumped a pillow in front of the kick. But um, let me remove that and let's see if you can hear what this drum sounds like without muting. So, no pillow. You hear that woofing coming from the front head, and that is basically what an actual 16-inch kick rezo head would sound like. And to me, it makes it feel very jazzy, but most of the time I'm playing rock and metal, and I hardly ever play jazz. If I did, I probably wouldn't be practicing it on an electronic kit anyway. So in order to get rid of that sound, I just chuck this pillow in front of the, the kick because I'm lazy. But if you're less lazy than I am, you can change the front head to a mesh head or you can put a pillow inside the drum and they would do pretty much the same thing. Now I've replaced the pillow and we don't get that woofing acoustic resonance happening from the front head of the kick anymore. The main limitations of any electronic kit will be the symbols, so I also had to tweak some of the symbol settings in the triggers for the crash. Um, if you hit it too lightly, it's not going to trigger anything. 
So I did want the edge to trigger a bit faster, so I increased the sensitivity for that just a touch by like 2, and I altered the curve a bit so that it gets louder when you hit it harder, but it's not too loud too fast, if that makes sense. Just so that cymbal swells will sound a little bit better. For the ride, I increased the sensitivity on the bell a little bit so that even when I hit it lightly, it's still going to trigger the bell sound. And I also reduced the sensitivity on the edge so that it's not too overwhelming when I'm crashing the ride. But those were just really small tweaks. This is plus four sensitivity on the bell and minus two sensitivity on the edge of the ride. For the hi-hat, I just reduced the sensitivity of the edge slightly. So I put a minus five on that so that the edge wouldn't be too loud in relation to the tip. The hi-hat is super sensitive when it's played with sticks, but the one limitation that I found is when you try to do a foot splash. So let me just show you how it sounds if I try to do a splash. So as you can hear, there is kind of a lot of the closed hat sound coming in before the actual splash sound. And this is just something that I haven't figured out any way to get around despite having tweaked most of the settings to do with the hi-hat. Um, on the bright side, I hardly use the foot splash in my playing, but it's something that I would want to be there if I did want to use it. Just be careful with your foot splashes. Everything else works pretty much fine. And that's about it for cymbal tweaks. The very last tweak that I made was actually a very simple thing, and that is under the settings, changing the power saving mode from always on to 30 minutes. And that's simply just because I'm really forgetful and sometimes I walk away while leaving the kit on. So it's nice to have a power saving option that will turn the drums off after a half an hour if it hasn't been used. All in all, I've really been enjoying playing these drums for the past month or two, and I would definitely recommend them if you're in the market for a new electronic drum set that's both playable, has great recording capabilities, and looks really good. Huge thanks to Music Connoisseur and Kaiping for providing me with these drums. It took me a while to actually agree to endorsing F-Note because I don't want to be playing an instrument that I'm not fully comfortable with. So I did go down to their shop to try it out first and kind of mess around with the settings just to see how the playability was. And definitely no regrets so far. If you're looking to try these out yourself and you're in Singapore, head over to Music Connoisseur and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them too. I'll put a link to their shop in the description. Hope this video has been useful to some of you and I'll see you in the next one.